The sum and average functions are probably the two most commonly used functions in Excel. Because they're amazingly simple to use, and because we tend to add up and average things a lot. To make sure you know how to use them, and to use them for more than a single, simple, contiguous range of cells, let's look at them now using the Selected Cities sheet, which contains population data from the census. First, when I go to cell D80, I can do a quick auto sum of the 2020 populations from the cities in California included in this particular list. To do this, I click in the cell and then I click the auto sum button on the home tab. Instantly, I have a sum of the cells above the cell containing the function. And as Excel is very good at guessing which adjacent cells one wants to sum, the range is correct. So when I press enter to accept the sum, it reflects the total of cells D5 through D79. I can then use the fill handle to repeat that formula for the 2010 census data, dragging the auto sum into column E to cell E80. And the sum now includes cells E5 through E79. This is an example of relative addressing, which we cover in another video in greater detail, but suffice to say, when you use the fill handle to copy a formula from one column to the next, or from one row to another, the cell addresses update to reflect the current location of the formula. Now let's get the average of that same range by clicking in cell D81 and clicking the drop arrow on the auto sum button. From there, we can choose average from the list. Of course, I could also type equals average and then press the tab key. But with the auto average command, Excel guesses which cells I want to average, and that's a big help. In this case, however, Excel has included the auto sum result in cell D80, so I need to edit the range. And I can do that easily by pressing the shift key and clicking in cell D79 to tell Excel, no, stop here and end the range on the cell I'm clicking in. Alternatively, I could have dragged through the desired range and omitted that last cell, or I could have edited the range in the function directly by typing and changing D80 to D79. In any case, as soon as I press enter, I've got the average population for the cities in California for 2020, and I can use the fill handle again to repeat the function in cell E81. Now let's quickly calculate the totals and averages for each of the remaining states. You can watch as I use auto sum and auto average at the end of each range of cities, editing ranges as needed before completing the functions. And now, to demonstrate how to customize the ranges to be summed or average, I'm going to insert totals for all four states and averages too. Starting in cell D160, I'll click the auto sum button. Excel is confused by the location of adjacent numbers, so I'm going to need to redirect it. To do so, I'll select the current range and then click on the Texas total. Then I'll scroll a bit 
press the control key and click on the New York total. Then I'll scroll some more, press the control key, and click on Florida's total. And then finally, I'll scroll up and control click on California's total. Notice that the formula accumulating on the formula bar includes the four totals for each of the four states. When I press enter, it tells Excel to complete the calculation. And there it is. I can use the fill handle to make that repeat in the tandem cells for the 2010 census numbers in column E. Of course, we could do an auto average for the four states, but given that we don't need Excel to guess which cells I want to average, and it would have no way of doing so accurately, I'll click in cell D161 and type equals average, press the tab key, and then drag through all the 2020 numbers for Texas. Then I'll scroll up to the New York numbers, press the control key, and drag through cells D112 through D108. Watch the formula accumulate on the formula bar. Each time I repress the control key, Excel inserts a comma and awaits the next range. Now I can scroll up for Florida's numbers, press control, and drag through cells D104 through D83. And finally, scroll up for California's numbers, pressing control again as I drag through cells D79 through D5. Now I can close the parentheses and press enter, and there's my average. And again, I can use the fill handle to repeat this for the 2010 numbers. Pretty powerful, very easy, and very simple to modify in terms of which numbers you need summed or averaged. No wonder the sum and average functions, whether built manually or triggered by their auto versions on the Home tab, are so popular.